Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess. I'm in my garden. It is a beautiful spring evening and today I want to talk to you about plant spacing in raised beds. Now I have a very large raised bed garden. I have more in the back and I'm a huge proponent for growing in raised beds. I think that they are wonderful. I think that they make gardening easier in a lot of ways, but unfortunately uh, there's a little confusion, especially for new gardeners, about how to plant them most effectively. And today I want to share with you a little bit of information to just sort of simplify the process of planting. So when you develop your raised beds, you always want to make them a width which can be accessed from all sides. So mine are all four feet wide, and that is a pretty common width for raised beds between two and four feet because you can stand on either side and reach to the middle of the bed. Because the beauty of raised beds is that the soil doesn't get walked on, therefore it doesn't get compact, therefore it is easier to weed and plants have an easier time uh, growing. Now whenever you get a seed packet or you buy a plant at the store, it's gonna have a little tag on it or information on the back of the seed packet that tells you plant spacing and row spacing. And this is the number one thing to remember when you're planting your raised beds. Uh, you don't have rows in your garden beds. So you absolutely do not need that information. You can completely disregard it. And usually it'll say something along the lines of row spacing 18 inches, 24 inches, 36 inches. It's assuming that you're going to need an access through your garden. You're gonna to need to be able to walk through your rows or run a rototiller through it. And neither of those are the case with raised bed gardening. So the only thing you really need to know on your seed packet is the plant spacing. Now in the case of root vegetables like these radishes, the plant spacing is about three inches apart, which is what I've done here with these seeds. And you'll notice that instead of just doing a single row that's three inches, every three inches there's a radish, I've done a block in my raised bed here. Now I don't measure this, I just kind of eyeball it and do about the same size of, of a block. Sometimes I'll plant a larger area, but I just plant each seed three inches apart in every direction. So we've got about three inches from the side, three inches to the next seed, three inches to the next seed, and so on and so forth. All you have to do is read the suggested plant spacing and give a plant that much space from every side. I like to do it in blocks because it just makes it easier for me. And that way if I want to do a block of radishes like you just saw and then the next block next to it I might do bean plants which may tell me to, to space six inches from each plant. And that makes more sense to me than doing individual rows down raised beds, but you could do either way. Now, while we're talking about planting closely together in blocks, I wanna to touch on the topic of square foot gardening. This is very confusing, I find, for many new gardeners because there is a, a wonderful book called The Square Foot Gardening Method. It's been around for a while. Many, many people have had great success with planting by the Square Foot Gardening Method. Unfortunately, the way information goes sometimes is that it will be shared in part, um, maybe on like a blog post or a Pinterest post, and someone will grab hold of a part of it and then they'll fail and then they'll think, ah, eh, the Square Foot Gardening Method didn't work for me or even worse they'll think I'm a bad gardener. The thing is, is the square foot gardening method is like a whole method that it doesn't just include planting things closely together in square foot blocks. It also includes what, what you're filling your bed with. It's a very specific mix. Um, it has to do with how you prune your plants in order to plant them so closely together. So if you're going to do the square foot gardening method, if you're going to plant by that method, I highly suggest you getting this book and reading it and learning exactly what that entails. It's by Mel Bartholomew. I'll put a link to it down below in the description of this video if you do want to dive deeper into that. Um, I was one of those people that I built my first raised garden bed and I started looking online at blogs and I saw people talking about square foot gardening and I saw planting guides and really pretty pictures that people have made showing that you can plant three tomatoes within a square foot or whatever it was. And I thought, oh, cool. I can do that, but I didn't know anything about the filling. I didn't know anything about the pruning. And I ended up planting a lot of stuff way too close together and my plants ended up really competing for one another because I wasn't doing the whole method, which provides plenty of nutrients and airflow with pruning. Now that I know more, I know that is a very valid way to garden. It's a very great way to garden. 
and I know a lot of people who've had success with it. However, I don't plant that way. I usually go back to the suggested plant spacing on the packages and plant closer to that, that method because I know that I'm not going to heavily prune all my plants and I know that I'm not going to want to add a whole lot of nutrients back to my soil, which is just plain soil. I don't have that special gardening mix in my garden. So I tell you all of that to save you the heartache of really intensely planting your garden without realizing there are other things involved. So when you are planting in raised beds, remember, no row spacing. You can plant things as long as you give them the proper plant spacing. But you do need to keep in mind um, resource consumption. You need to keep in mind that you're not putting your plants in a position to compete for resources. For instance, if I were to plant my radishes much closer together, some of them would still grow and they would even grow roots, but many of them would not grow roots because there wouldn't be enough energy here in this part of, of the soil in order for all of them to grow roots. And there are other methods of growing, which you can plant things closer together, which you can be more mindful, which you can fertilize more. I'm not saying there's no other way to do it. I'm saying that probably for a new gardener that has new raised beds, the easiest way to do it is look at that plant spacing and give those plants that amount of space on all sides. And in some cases you are going to determine your spacing by the desired result. Now here I have all of these little rainbow charred plants. You see them all down this nice row. Now I have each of these plants spaced out about eight to 12 inches apart. And because I've given them such ample space, these rainbow charred plants are gonna get really large. I'm gonna get nice full size uh, leafy greens and I'm gonna be able to juice and saute and they'll be wonderful. However, you know what else is really great? Baby chard. Young little leaves that you get like in salad mixes from the store. If you're not wanting something to get really big, there's no reason to give it this much space. Basically, if you plant things closer together, they're not gonna have the same access to resources. They're gonna be in competition with the plants that are very near to them for nutrients in the soil, for water in the soil. In a lot of cases for sunlight because they'll be shading each other from the sun. And therefore they're gonna stay smaller. And in a lot of cases, that's fine. It might be what you want. So you could grow lettuce really close together. Like if you buy a, a little packet of lettuce mix seeds, those are full size lettuce plants. If you, you, it's not a special kind of seed. If you space them out, accordingly and give them a foot each in all directions or 10 inches in all directions you get big heads of lettuce but by growing them all together for a salad mix you're going to harvest those leaves really young they don't need that much space same thing with kales and chards anything that you might want to keep smaller so you see in some cases dense planting might bring a desired result but if you don't understand what plants need and you plant them too close together therefore they're in competition with their neighbors for the resources that they need you might end up with that result and it not be desired so if you planted your tomatoes really cl close together or your melon vines they're really close together and these plants are competing for resources in order to produce the fruit that you want you might end up with less fruit or smaller fruit or kind of punier plants so the thing to keep in mind if you decide to go against that suggested plant spacing is make sure that you are giving your plants the water and the nutrients that they need and make sure that they're not shading each other out from light so you might kind of combat that thinking by being like, oh, I'll just give them extra space because then they'll get bigger or they'll have to compete less. And really you want to plant things as closely together as you can and produce healthy plants because if you put extra space in between plants in your garden beds, you're gonna deal with more weeds and you're not getting as much yield for your garden space as you could be. So you definitely want to kind of come up to the limit of what you can do productively and do that. The last thing to keep in mind whenever you're planting your garden, I'm gonna use tomatoes for instance because I love growing tomatoes and I know that's no surprise to those of you who have been here for very long. Now when you go do an internet search that says how far apart should I plant my tomatoes, you will find answers anywhere between 12 inches and 36 inches. And there are a lot of factors that come into that, like whether you're pruning, how you're staking them, whether they're indeterminates or determinants. All of these things are gonna come into consideration when you're deciding how far apart you should plant your plants. So the point of this video is not to go through the list of every plant in your garden and tell you the exact spacing that it needs. 
The main thing I wanna teach you is how to find this information, how to ask the right questions so that you don't feel overwhelmed and throw your hands up with analysis paralysis and just give up. I just wanna encourage you that if you are looking somewhere for suggestion on spacing and you see somebody say, plant your tomatoes 12 inches apart, dig a little deeper and find out how that person cares for their tomato plants. It's kind of the same thing with the square foot gardening method. A lot of times the way you are choosing your plant spacing, it goes a lot in line with the way that you're actually growing your garden. For instance, I typically grow my tomato plants out here in my garden 18 inches apart, but I also prune them down to a single stem to promote airflow. Planting that close together if you weren't gonna prune your tomatoes would probably end up leading to the death of your tomato plants because with no airflow, you'll end up with fungal diseases and bacterial diseases. So you see, it's really important to get the whole picture whenever you're taking advice from somebody so that you don't end up in a situation where everything's going wrong and you think, wait a second, I followed that person's advice and they have a great garden. Because there might be some factors that you're not considering yet. However, you can go back to that suggested seed spacing or plant spacing on your seed packet and use that as a diving off point, as a place to you know just start there to get a feel for things because that is going to be a kind of liberal suggestion. Like a lot of times I end up growing things a little closer together than what that, that seed packet might suggest because I know I have great soil and I know how to prune and I know how to take care of my plants. But overall, if you're planting blocks with the suggested seed spacing, you're gonna have a pretty good outcome in your garden. And by using things like arch trellises here, which of course there's nothing growing on these right now, or wall trellises like I've got here, these cattle panels up on T-posts, I'm able to maximize the space in my garden by growing the plants up. And all I have to consider is the footprint. See, here's another little block of radishes that's on the other side of a trellis with bean plants underneath it, which those volunteered. I didn't even plant those. I'll thin them out. But you get the idea. Raised bed gardening really is very, very simple. And right now, I really think kind of what's happened is we're sort of in this limbo of it becoming really popular. And a lot of seed companies and plant nurseries that do starts and give the information, they just haven't changed the way that they deliver their instructions. The fact of the matter is it doesn't really matter what it says on the back of the seed packet or, or on the instructions or on the blog you read. That seed is gonna grow a plant <laughs> that grows the same way no matter what anybody says. And while this is really confusing when you get started, I promise you learn so much from one year of hands-on growing. Just seeing a plant grow for the first time is like a revelation. It's a light bulb moment of like, oh, okay, now I understand and now I can better give these plants what they need. So I wanna encourage you here at the beginning, don't fall prey to analysis paralysis. Don't overthink things. Use that seed spacing and plant spacing as a diving off point and find your way of doing things. Whether you do it in blocks or rows, whether you plant a bed of all the same thing or you like to mix it up and keep it diverse, you can grow a great garden and get a lot of abundance from it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope this helps. I bless you. Until next time.